Thank you for joining us for this episode of This Is Getting Old, Moving Towards an Age-Friendly World. This 10-part series is sponsored by AARP's Community Challenge Grant and George Washington University's University Seminar Series, and is brought to you by Melissa B., Ph.D., in collaboration with GW Center for Aging, Health, and Humanities. Welcome to This Is Getting Old. I'm your host, Melissa Batchelor, and today I'll be sharing a recent initiative that I've been working on with some colleagues called the AARP Age-Friendly Social Innovation Challenge. It's a 10-part special series, and today we're going to be talking about part four, which is community support and health services. So this series is actually related to several regional events that we've held at the George Washington University Center for Aging, Health, and Humanities with our five regional age-friendly municipalities and our multiple partners. If you missed the overview, please check out part one, which is episode 89, if you're looking for it on my website, melissabphd.com, or on my YouTube channel. So to briefly review, this, the morning session for this event was spent learning about design thinking, and then participants were paired by domains, and these domains are reflective of the World Health Organization and AARP's framework for age-friendly cities and communities. And like I said earlier, this episode is focused on community support and health services. So community supports are local services, so something like an active intergenerational community center or recreational center, and these services um, and locations just make it easier for people to connect with one another and build community ties. So other examples are programs that promote food security or help residents make critical repairs to their homes, regardless of age, economic level, or ability. Health services, on the other hand, range from primary care providers, mental health services, substance abuse and treatment programs, preventive and health maintenance programs, rehabilitation programs, pharmacy services, and dental care. So basically the whole kit and caboodle. Recreational opportunities encourage residents to maintain or improve their health, which in turn makes them more likely to shop at a local business, volunteer their time, or be active in civic affairs. So it's clear to see that there are many, many things related to community support and health services for older adults. So in order to focus the group's thinking and problem solving, a scenario was designed by our design thinking team. From there, the group devised five different ideas for ways to solve this problem, and then they chose one to develop into an innovative solution, and that's what they presented. So the participants included university students from the DC metro area, older adults, local leaders who live in the region, and others who work in the age-friendly space. As you listen, you may also have an idea for a solution, or you may know of a program that would help older adults and their families facing a similar challenge. Please add your comments to this video below. We'd love to hear from you. Now let's listen to hear what they came up with. So I'm gonna read the case about the community support and health services. So it says, uh, my name is June. I am a retired accountant and I am 84 years old young. My children are long since growing and have moved away to start their own lives. I feel fairly independent, but I am finding I need more help these days than before. I live in Silver Spring, Maryland, and there aren't good public transportation options in my neighborhood. I live in an area that is considered a food desert. I am feeling pretty awful today. I am so afraid COVID even though I am fully vaccinated. I am running low on groceries and need to travel over seven miles to get to the nearest grocery store that sells affordable fresh groceries. When I still lived with my family, I took much pleasure in cooking large weekends meal, the vibrant conversation that happened with friends and around the table made all the hard work worthwhile. So uh, we did identify the, has the problem statement for June that she needed three main areas to be covered. So the main and the principal issue that she was facing was the poor access to fresh uh, and healthy food. Then she's saying that she is finding issues socializing with other people because she feels isolated and she's a little down about that. In addition to that, she feels like a part of the contribution to the problem is the lack of transportation or the transportation barriers because she lives alone 
and she has COVID concerns. And I think that like June, everybody has been going through this situation through the pandemic crisis, right? So um, these are the three areas that we identified with the case that we discuss in the group. So the innovative solution. So we decided to go through multiple scenarios and come out that because the most important issue for June is the access to commodity food. So um, we were thinking that we could put together an a scenario or a program where we can solidify the three areas that she's facing challenges with, which is the transportation, the access to food, and the isolation, social isolation problem. So um, we decided that a weekly seasonal intergenerational cooking class will bring a lot of benefits for June. So how we're gonna do this? So we're gonna reach out to organizations and set up um, in the summer, in the winter, outdoor, and virtually. So um, why all these areas we consider is because outside she's she doesn't want to have contact with people she needs to be um, mentally comfortable when she's doing certain things that will cheer her up so in the summer there will be activities outside and in the winter we need to look for alternatives to bring this uh, solution to her home so we decided that there can be a virtual engagement and we discuss many areas in many uh, situations and how to help her to find a way to virtually engage and stay, um, you know, socializing with the community, with family, with friends, but also with all of these providers and vendors that can provide benefits to her. The community supported agriculture um, is something that a lot of people is taking advantage of right now. A lot of farmers have programs that they are willing to, um, you know, benefit people with needs uh, with commodity food. So there are many organizations that can partner with um, one entity that will support June in this area. So, um, and then the other aspect was that this can include transportation. If uh, the food is available, there are many ways where she can get food at her home. Um, the food can be delivered for her. And um, how there are many ways as well where the community can come together and support her. Uh, one of the areas that we discussed was through volunteerism taking advantage of the community students that can get involved and gain service hours that anyways, they are mandatory for them, but they also can come together and support uh, June needs during this scenario. So um, there are many opportunities for entities to recruit volunteers or the volunteers itself can reach out to um, to entities to provide services so they um, interact with adults and they can actually have that interaction of intergenerational conversations and support as well. So it's giving and taking benefit. So we did discuss that not only adults, uh, not only teenage can do this type of services. There are many entities that can uh, partner with um, an organization to bring senior companionship. Um, there are many seniors that enjoy getting together and that way can decrease the isolation program, the social isolation for people like June. Um, also, we, we can reach out to community centers. There are many people doing uh, this type of engagement with seniors, so um, there are referral places where can people can get volunteers or just refer to partners where they can make up with a phone call can get a group of students to help to deliver the food to this person or just to participate in intergenerational activities or conversation that will help 
our um, case, our person in our case, to um, overcome the social isolation and at the same time help her with remediating the problem with the food needs. Um, basically, in, in, in small words, so we find the statement that is the way to access fresh food, um, you know, because she needs to, she used to enjoy cooking. And for that, she will need transportation to get out, to get groceries. She will need probably money to get that. So if we can enable her with the, with the food, with the transportation, and with the delivery of these items, if she cannot, she doesn't want to leave the home because of her concerns about the COVID. So basically that was the conclusion that we got with the group. I would like to thank all the participants in this group for their time, effort, and energy. I love that this scenario had an importance placed on meals and how important meals are to our social lives with our families and friends. I love the idea of the program called Creating Community Through Food that brings multiple generations together because access to healthy foods and having community spaces to do this type of activity are really what this domain is all about. If you missed my episode about culinary medicine and the culinary medicine program with Dr. Tim Harlan, please check that out. That's another great opportunity and program that is available online um, to help you learn culinary skills and how food is actually um, medicine and equals health. And if you have another idea for a solution or know of a program that would help older adults and their families facing similar challenges, please add your comments below this video or on my website where the episode can be found at melissabphd.com. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you for joining us for this episode of This Is Getting Old, Moving Towards an age friendly World. This 10-part series is sponsored by AARP's Community Challenge Grant and George Washington University's University Seminar Series and is brought to you by Melissa B., Ph.D., in collaboration with GW Center for Aging, Health, and Humanities.